Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got a bit of a quick tip for you, or at least something I thought was kind of interesting or, or different, something we haven't seen before, put it that way. Uh, so I was looking through the beta release notes for the Phoenix 6 Mark and Enduro series watches uh, that was just published a couple days ago, and there was a new sport profile listed there, and it's called Adventure Racing. I thought, huh, what that means. And so I figured I'd show you exactly what it means and how it's different than other things. Now it's important to note that this feature is on the public beta firmware and not the production firmware. Uh, meaning that if you want to download it, you can see the links down below there and go to the beta website and download it for free. It's all that kind of stuff. It's just not yet on all the watches. That'll probably come at some point in the next couple weeks or month or something like that whenever Garmin switches it from beta to production. Now before I show you the technical side of the feature, let me just explain like 30 seconds or less what adventure racing is. Essentially it's like a running race, typically like a trail running race, uh, but combined with orienteering skills. So the idea that you use a compass and a map, uh, typically like a paper map, that's that thing that like you would print on a printer. I'm not sure if you've seen that, but it actually makes paper and then you put like a map on top of it, not your phone. It's different than Google Maps. So you have this map thing, then you have a compass. And a compass, of course, is what you use to find the North Pole where Santa is. Uh, but when you combine those two things together with running, then you get this adventure racing category, sometimes called fell racing, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, but the important part there with all that is that you're not allowed to use a GPS device. It has to be like old school style. Uh, but a lot of people want to go ahead and record their performance. But of course, these days, every watch has GPS in it. Now, some watches, some older watches primarily, or some cheaper watches uh, don't have navigation in or mapping in it or that really loud quacking duck next to me right there. Uh, but they just have like the basics of where you've been that you can see after the fact. So that's essentially what Garmin is doing with his adventure mode. It does not allow you to access any of the maps while you're doing the activity itself um, or any navigational type fields except the compass itself. So let me show you how this works. Okay, so here we are on the watch itself. Now the first time you get into this, you need to add it to your sport profile. So you go down into the sport list there, all the way down to the bottom where you'll see the add option, keep on going, add right there. And then you'll find yourself the adventure race option right there. Tap that, you can choose to set it as a favorite if you want to. I will make this simple. And then it shows up in your sport list. So choose that there, select it, uh, and now you're in the adventure race option. Uh, so by default, it's gonna go ahead and find GPS because it's still gonna use GPS to track you, you just can't see that data while you're running. Uh, so in this case, you can see the elevation, the altimeter is allowed, uh, and the time of day and lap time. Uh, but if I go down to the next data field right here, you'll see I have a compass. So that of course still works like normal because uh, compasses are generally loud in most of these races, uh, always loud, I guess. And you have this new field, which is start time and the time of day. And this will be interesting after the fact. I'm gonna show you kind of a neat little trick they've done here. So going back into the settings here, it's pretty interesting how they've locked this down a little bit. So menu of this side right there, adventure race settings uh, and data screens. And you can see, I've got these uh, two initial data screens. I can add new ones and I can choose just a few. I can choose clock, elevation, heart rate gauge, or custom data. Uh, and I'm just gonna choose one field to make this easy. Uh, and I'm gonna come back to connect to fields in a second. But I got timer fields, heart rate fields, elevation fields, compass fields, other fields, which includes like calories, sunrise, sunset, time of day, pressure, respiration rate, uh, and graphical fields, so heart rate and compass. But I don't have like distance fields or any mapping fields or any navigation fields. None of that stuff is here. Now, the one catch is this one right here. Connect IQ fields are still allowed, which means I can add any Connect IQ app I want, which means I can basically do anything I want, including mapping. There's like the DW map uh, data field that would work here to do basic mapping. And I mean, there's thousands of apps and a lot of them have distance displayed. So I think this is probably the one gap in this that ultimately, in my mind, they need to disallow Connect IQ fields from being accessed uh, within this profile. Now, if we go back into the sport profile settings again, there's a couple more interesting things here. First off, there's no more auto laps. You can't do like auto lap by kilometer a mile because that's hidden because you're not supposed to just know your distance. Lap key is still there if you want to, perhaps to use as waypoints or something like that. Uh, but otherwise, there's no other like sport access stuff here from a distance uh, standpoint. Again, going back into the settings here, uh, control sensors, there's the map options, but you can't see the map options. And this is actually set to none. I changed it for fun to just double check this, uh, but normally it's none. Not that it matters because you can't actually load the map page in any way in this sport profile. Uh, but again, this still depends on like a bit of honesty here, right? Uh, but watch this. I'm going to start this real quick for just literally five seconds uh, for fun. And then down the bottom here, you see this start time field, this whole page is shown right there in time of day. Uh, and then I'm going to go and end this. And you can see again, I can calibrate altimeter if I want to, but I'm going to end the activity. Yep, end it. Uh, and watch, there's a new data field that shows the verification, uh, or new portion of your um, basically summary page. So I click this there in verification, and this shows my start time, 
and my stop time. Again, same time because I just started and stopped this right now. Uh, but this is not something that's seen on the rest of the data profile fields uh, and is unique to the adventure race option. Uh, and then once in this field, then I can see my map information. Then I can load this map up and see all my data and time and distance and all the normal things that I would expect to see under all stats. Uh, again, I went nowhere, right? So average speed is nothing and descent and all that kind of stuff. Um, distance is nowhere. But the point is at this point, it just will track it like normal and your upload to Garmin Connect shows all those normal stats you see just like a normal run, except that you just couldn't see them during the race itself. Okay, there you go. A quick look at the adventure racing feature. Now for a lot of you, like myself, I will probably never, use, not probably, I will never use this in any, any scenario that I can think of. I'm just not going to enter those types of races. But that's probably in some ways why Garmin succeeds at large and why they've made this, you know, massive business out of selling GPS sport watches is because they have so many different options for so many different people. Now, of course, some people would say, often rightly so, that Garmin spreads itself too thin in developing all these features and then other features get left for dead or broken or bugs or whatever the case is. And that may be the case here. But I think the whole point of public beta is that people can provide their feedback in and hopefully change the direction of those features and change the direction of bugginess as well. Anyways, with that, if you found this interesting, whack that like button at the bottom or hit subscribe for Ponte more sports technology goodness. I've got some goodness coming. I've been testing stuff for a while and now it's coming out very, very shortly here. With that, have a good one.